This morning we'll continue by reading the next verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, 1, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We remember who this book is written to, of course to you and I, but it was written to these Jewish believers that had come to a knowledge of faith, forgiveness of sin, experienced salvation, and they were living now by faith. They've come out of a religion, and they were contemplating now returning back to the form of what they worshipped before and how they worshipped. There was a lot of rituals, a system that was based on works, not faith. It was based upon human effort, what you could do, what I could do, what they could do. And because they had placed their faith and trust in Jesus for the saving of their soul, they faced tremendous persecution and hardship for their faith like most of us here this morning. We cannot imagine. And the writer in the face of this responds throughout the book of Hebrews to them to their contemplating of returning back or giving up or backsliding or compromising. He responds back throughout this book. And here in chapter 11, once again, he gives them reasons not to return back. Yes. And the, har the response to hardships persecution if you may if you are persecuted for Jesus' sake there's a promise for you and for them but we face difficulties hardships discouragements trials that come in our life and him writing is the response to those things that come our way is never to turn back but our response as Christians is by faith and through faith in Jesus Christ is to move forward, is not to go back. The context of uh, chapter 11 is found here in this verse that I read. And the Bible says that we are, they are, we are compassed about, surrounded by a big cloud of witnesses. And these uh, witnesses, Brother Soren just read, there's quite the list there. And the writer says it wasn't because he couldn't come up with more in verse 32, but he tells us there is because the time didn't allow him to. But here these Jewish believers, these were their heroes. These are Old Testament saints that they could relate to. The imagery a lot of times in uh, the New Testament or analogies that is used is that of athletics or athletes. And uh, here the writer in Hebrews 12.1 uses it. We are all in a, a race, yes. a marathon. Now, 
I could hardly imagine running a marathon. Maybe you, you can, but 26.2 miles is a, a marathon, an Olympic marathon today. That's a long, long, long run, but that's kind of the life of a Christian. We're in a marathon. And the Bible says that all of us are in this race, but here the writer uses that chapter 11, those heroes of faith are the witnesses, those that have gone before, the crowd that he speaks about, are those that rise up on the pages of Scripture that we look into chapter 11 and see who these runners were. A few years ago, I was watching the Olympics and uh, came across the scene where the end of a marathon was run. And uh, mostly it's run outside, outside of an arena, but the last part and the ones that actually they show is the last portion of the race where the runners come into this great arena and they run the last portion of the race and, and imagine how exhausted, how tired they must be after running that amount of time and the, the length of the marathon. But as they were finishing, the finishing part, the last part of it, it was in a, an arena where as the run, these runners were coming in, the crowd began to stand and to applaud for them and to encourage them to finish the race strong. Not to give up at the very end, but to finish the race that they had started. And here in chapter 11, these witnesses, this crowd, this cloud of witnesses are those that stand on the faces of scripture that stand to tell us don't give up finish the race you can do it and because they did it and there's 17 names here that were given Abel Enoch Noah Abraham Sarah Isaac Jacob Joseph Moses Joshua Rahab Gideon Barak Samson, Jephthah, Jephthah, David, and Samuel. These are, these are names that we know in the Old Testament. And we, we can relate to them. These are the witnesses. This is the crowd that uh, Hebrews 12 testifies of. And, and what, are the, what does it testify of? What, what does their life testify to us and to those Jewish believers? Well, they are a witness of the fact that God is faithful. And if we live by faith and obedience in God, if we live our life that we're called to live, God will help us to finish this race. That no matter what hardship, no matter what trial, no matter what persecution, no matter what we may face, no matter what comes our way, God is faithful to help us. There are witnesses that testify to the great fact that if we are faithful and the obedient, just like they were faithful and obedient, we can run and finish our race. You know, God has given us a promise. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident. There's that faith. Our confidence is in God. We talked about that last week or a couple weeks ago. Being confident of this very thing. What are we confident of? What, what very thing is he talking about? That he, God, which began a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a promise. You don't have to wonder, can I finish the race? You don't have to wonder, do I have enough endurance? 
Do I have what it takes to finish the race? Here, we're given a promise that he, which began a good work in us, will bring it to accomplish, to finish. And we see that in these witnesses that we're given here, this cloud of witnesses. They all began. It's one thing to begin. It's one thing to journey out. It's one thing to step out on faith and believe God's promises. But it's another thing to finish it, to follow through to the very end. You know, many people start out. Many people start out and putting their trust and faith in God, but somewhere along the way, they give up. Somewhere along the 26.2 miles, because of the things that they face, the hardships, and, and your body's being broken down, tired, exhausted, not enough strength to take the next step. Here we're given a crowd of witnesses that they all started and they all finished. And it, this speaks to the fact that if we start our journey in faith and obedience to God, God will help us finish it. And that's why they're a part of this crowd. And we know of others in the Old Testament that are not part of this crowd, maybe like Saul. That started, had a good start. Solomon, why isn't he in here? Why is this man that ever lived? Had a good start. Why isn't he in here? Why isn't he mentioned? You know, just because you start doesn't mean you'll arrive. And God wants us to look at these heroes of faith. Anytime you're discouraged, you're facing a hardship, you're in the middle of a trial, look to Hebrews 11. Look to these ones, and they're just people like you and I. There is nothing really great or special about them. They're human beings. They had a soul. God breathed the breath of life in them just like he did in ours. But they did something that we can all do. Live by faith. In faith, verse 1, we see that faith is living in absolute confidence, and this is what they did, in what God had said to each one of them, and in, in what he had promised them, even when the fulfillment of his promise was yet not seen. That, that they all have that in common. And if you're going to live a Christian life, it will require this. Faith is the confident assurance that what God has promised is going to happen. Amen. That's faith. It is a certainty of what we hope for is waiting for us even though it has not happened yet. That's faith. We cannot see it up ahead. We sometimes don't know how. And you'll see this, like the walls of Jericho, the plan that was given to them. Faith is believing that it's true because God had said it, simply based on that. You just trust because God had said it, and you'll see that, that God just promised, like to Abraham. Didn't tell him a whole lot of things. Didn't tell him, here's the plan. Here's a 58-page plan that I'm going to give you step by step. No. Faith is believing that it's true because God has said it. We see that in verse 2, that every one of them and every one of us have to live by faith. There's no way around it. A Christian cannot live a life pleasing to God unless you live by faith. Not, not circumstance, not what you can see, not what you can obtain and touch, but solely by faith. 
and they did. How we know? Because they received a good report. Yeah. Who, who wants to receive a good report? Who's in school <laughs> and wants to receive a good report card? At the end of your year review, we all want to receive a good report, yeah. right? You, you want to be said of, like, you did a great job this year. Therefore, you get to keep your job, or maybe you get, you get a raise. But they obtain, the elders, the Bible tells us, they obtain a good report. You know, God keeps records. God notices of what things are going on in our lives and how we live our lives and what we live our lives based upon. And we want that good report at the end of our life when we stand before the Lord. We want to hear that good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear. Enter in. And we obtain that good report only and if we live a life of faith. Because that's all it counts. That's all it matters to God. That's what God recognizes and blesses is faith. We want to have a good report. Christian life is not lived by works. It's not what you can do in your human effort. No amount of rituals, no amount of coming to church, no amount of money you can give, no amount of work or service that you can give to God but it's all by living by faith. Yeah. In verse 3, we're told that our faith in God provides us with the revelation and understanding that the world has no idea about. We are so blessed. Let me allow, allow me to read it to you. It says, through faith, we understand. We understand. It doesn't say the world understands. Through faith, because you and I believe and we choose to believe. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We thank God for Genesis 1 and 2. Because we have an understanding that the world has no idea about. We believe that God and have faith and trust that God created the heavens and the earth. It tells us there. God created all of them. We understand that. Imagine if you had no idea that that happened. And how many billions of people on earth have no concept of that? How blessed are we here to know that? That's a fact. God spoke it all into existence. And in Colossians tells us that God not only spoke it all into He's the one that sustains and keeps everything going. It's all in his hands. And we understand that. Yeah. How? Because we believe his word. It's literal. He created the heavens and the earth. Everything that we see, God made it. And the reason that's important, because it answers all the big questions in life when we know that. It answers the questions as, where do we come from? Why are we here? It helps us know and understand that. There's a, is there a purpose of why I'm here? Well, if you don't believe that God created you and made you and he created everything, how else would you live? What would you live for? That's the world. And we see it. But we have a purpose. 
God has given each one of us a soul. We're eternal beings. And we understand that. And that's very important as we live our lives by faith. Think of the quality of life that we live compared to the world. Because we understand that God created the heavens and the earth. And he created us for a purpose. And the purpose that he created us for us is to serve him. To serve him. To live by faith and trust in the Lord. I thought of the quality of life that I live and compares to people that I know. I wouldn't trade my life for anybody's. It doesn't matter the amount of money that they have. I can lay my head on my pillow at night and know it is all well. I'm at peace. I have peace with God. Only through faith. Only because we have that understanding. We're blessed. The world lives like this. John 10.10 10 tells us the thief, the devil... Come it not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he comes for. That's the quality of life he wants to give you. That's what he does. No matter how happy they look, no matter how you think, oh, man, if, if I can just have their life for one day. No, you don't. No, because this is, this is the devil. Jesus says, I am come. That they might have life, we have life. Not only that, that we might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Because we understand and believe and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we have an abundant life. It's a wonderful life. I, I thought of the, the, the benefits that we have just because we understand and live by faith. Think of just our physical benefits. People that out in the world, they destroy their bodies. Think mentally. Think emotionally. We, we can live and, and have a, a sound mind. Benefits? Absolutely. You get out there and you rub up against the world and you talk to people and you see how lost they are. And I think, thank you, God, that I believe Genesis 1 and 2 and then set everything in motion that I can live my life based on faith and trust in the Lord. Unmatched benefits that we have. And it takes belief and obedience in God. The writer calls them to testify. And this cloud of witnesses, what they're doing is testifying, Amen. telling us. You know, I, I, I like testimony service. We, we testify. And I, there's a lot of good purposes and reasons why, but I thought of two. One is to give God the glory and the thanks and acknowledge him for what he has done. Amen. And the re second reason we testify is to be a witness, to uh, be an encouragement yeah. to each other. Because it's possible that we are going through something that you've been through, mm -hmm. and God has helped you. And here, these 17 are testimonies. To you and I, to let us know that no matter the circumstance, and you find their circumstances are so different. You see that it's by faith, through faith. They've come from all walks of life. But they all testify to the same very fact that God will carry you through. He will take you to the very end. He will help you all the way through if you choose to live a life of faith and obedience in him. And they all did that. A few years ago, uh, I witnessed an accident. And um, 
I felt like I should stop since I was a night witness. I saw it happen right in front of me. So I was probably one of the best witnesses to stop and give the account of what I saw. And that's really what a witness is. And I did. And I'm sure it was greatly appreciated a few years ago. I got in an accident. And I'm glad there was a witness that stopped and give an account of what they saw because without that, I would have been on the hook. A witness is very important. And I'll encourage you, if, if the Lord prompts you to do it, do it. It's a good thing to give an account of what you saw. And that's what a witness is. That's what these people are. They're witnesses to you and I in the scriptures. I thought of a testimony I heard this last weekend. Sister Cindy Fitton, Brother Donald's wife from Arkansas, that he was the special meetings guest minister in Medford. But she gave a kind of a lengthy testimony that blessed me, encouraged me. And she talked about how there was a time in her life that she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And she was really ill and progressively got worse and that she had been prayed for, come up and the ministers laid their hands on it and anointed her with oil and was prayed for. And uh, she wasn't healed. But there was a, a meeting that she was in and God prompted her to come up once again yeah. and get prayed for. And she did that. But what stood out to me is she didn't receive her healing immediately. But she trusted God and believed God, even though she didn't receive the healing, is as of well it, it was to her as it was done that's faith that's the definition of faith it's trusting that god promised and god did it even though there was no evidence she chose to believe that god healed her and you know the evidence came there was a day after the fact that she received her complete healing. Amen. She was completely healed. And I thought, Lord, that's faith. It's to believe that God, has prom who has promised, will deliver even though we don't see it. Even though it hasn't happened yet. And yet that's how we live our lives by faith. God has promised so many things to us. And you and I have a choice. Do we believe his promise? Yes. Do we live by faith as it though has happened? Do you trust God that what he has promised you, he will deliver? He will accomplish in your life. He will do what he says he will do. Then it's settled. I heard some amens then you can receive from the Lord. You will receive from the Lord because that's the definition of faith. That's the faith that these witnesses all lived. It was practical. It was on a daily basis. It was something that we can track to see how it was progressed and how they did it as they walked with God. Some of them for a long period of time. I won't get into it. I don't have time. But we'll, maybe next time we'll talk about those certain 17 and see how they did it. And see what we can learn from their lives. But we are called to live a life of trust and dependence upon God. Looking to the Lord. Luke 18, 8 says this. The last portion of that verse is, When the Son of Man cometh, not if, 
These, these are Jesus' words. When, and it's sooner than we think, when the Son of Man cometh, there's only one requirement that he was looking for, shall he find faith upon the earth? He's looking for those that are living by faith. Amen. Will he find it in you and I when he comes? He's not looking for those that are doing all these wonderful things for him. He's not looking for those that are giving God all these things and money, what have you, service and going to Africa and all these things. No, he's looking for those that are living by faith. Will he find faith when he looks at you and I? Will he find faith in there? Will he find us faithful, trusting, dependent upon him? That's what he's looking for when he comes. God help us. We want to live this life of faith. And God enables us to. He helps us. Are you living a life of faith today? You know, we can all search our hearts. You know. And if you know, God knows. But maybe you need more faith. No, it doesn't take a lot of faith. You know, it's, the Bible describes faith as far as the size of it as a, a seed of a mustard seed, right? That's one of the smallest seeds. It's not important how much you have. It's not asking for you to have a whole lot of faith. We want a lot of faith. We need a lot of faith sometimes. But it's little. You know why? Because your faith is in God. That's why it doesn't matter the size. As long as it's in God and you're living by faith. We want to live by faith. God will give you. He'll add to your faith. And you hearing his word, the Bible says that's how we add to our faith. It comes by hearing and hearing of God's word. The more you hear it, the more you apply it, the more faith you have. And it grows. And these witnesses, by looking at this chapter and looking into God's word, our faith should grow. We can look at the, them and say, man, if they could do that, if they could just trust God, God will come through for me. Amen. God, will, God will do it for me. And that's our prayer, that God will build us up in the faith in 2023. We're going to sing a song of invitation as we open our altar service. We're going to sing 571. Trust and obey. That's what we want. That's where the victory's at, is trusting God and obeying him. And then we'll see that all of them did this. They trusted and obeyed God. 571, God bless you this morning.